So this project started off simple enough. All I had to do was provide a shelter for my outdoor cat. And I may have overcomplicated it. Hi, my name's Jason. Welcome to my channel. I'm new here, so if you like this video, consider subscribing. It would be a big help. So my initial plan was to just enclose three sides or three and a half sides of an existing shelf just so that my cat would have somewhere to go that was partially protected from cold weather, rain, wind, that sort of thing. Uh, we live in Florida, so cold weather is not really a big deal, but keep in mind I am trying to protect a Florida cat. He's used to, you know, 90 degree temperatures, um, so he doesn't do too well in the colder months. He does like to come inside and warm up, but he also likes to come and go as he pleases. So I think an outdoor shelter would be ideal. I purchased some insulating foam sheets so that I could cut them to block off the sides of the shelf. Um, but as soon as I started doing that, I realized this thing was going to look kind of janky. I thought I could do better. So I fired up my computer, opened up Fusion 360, and I started designing freestanding structures. And my first thought was igloo, uh, like a dome with an uh, entryway of some sort. I came across a really helpful tutorial on how to create three-dimensional objects out of surface bodies. I'll add a link in the description below. Basically, you create a shape, surface body, it can be any shape, and you duplicate that shape, and you rotate the duplicate along one of the shared edges, and you keep doing that until eventually you have all the sides of your, your body. And then you stitch the edges together to make it a solid body, which you can then 3D print. So that's what I did. First, with a 12-sided object made of pentagons. Next, I made an 8-sided version out of triangles. And finally, I made what would have been a 20-sided object out of triangles, but I chopped the bottom off. So it's only 15 sides with a large base, just to give it some stability. This one, to me, looks like a circus tent. So this one's out. Next, the eight-sided version. I wasn't convinced that this would be very durable. You know, pointy edges and foam, they'd probably take a beating in those areas. So this one's also out. Which brings me back to the original design using pentagons. This is called a dodecahedron. And if I'm pronouncing that wrong, let me know in the comments. Next was to create an opening to allow access to the inside, which leads me to this version. So this has a covered entryway and a raised floor. The covered entryway is really to just protect the inside from rain and wind. Um, and then the raised floor is to give added insulation from the ground. But also in this design, because it has tapered edges, as you go higher up in the structure, you actually end up with more floor space. But how big does it need to be? I spent a not insignificant amount of time trying to measure my cat. Uh, it's harder than you would imagine, but I eventually settled on a final height of 18 inches. Really, I couldn't go any larger because of the size of the foam and the size that the floor ends up being. Shortly after, I made a discovery on this design. There just so happens to be 10 identical shapes, 10 identical pentagons that need to be cut out, which is great if you're cutting things out and you can make a jig for it. But also 10 is where you start getting price breaks when you have laser cutting done on materials. <laughs> so you see where I'm going with this. Uh, this design was meant to be a laser cut metal cat igloo. So I exported the five unique shapes in this design to my favorite laser cutting service and ordered all the parts necessary in one eighth aluminum sheet, plate, I think it's sheet, um, and just waiting for delivery. It wasn't cheap. Um, $240 is a lot for a cat shelter, cat igloo. Uh, but when you consider 
that I'm going to be able to utilize uh, my welder, get some more time practicing my welding skills. Um, and this thing should be pretty durable, should last a while. So I think this will be part one of a three part series. This part being the uh, concept and design. Part two will probably be me receiving the parts and trying to get them to stay together while I weld them. And part three, you know, final welding, recap, um, anything I would have done differently, and any um, post-processing or finishing operations that need to be done. Side note, this version can be completely printed without support material. So it would be perfect if you had small, uh, small animals or reptiles, provided you printed it as something non-toxic. So uh, I will figure out if I can upload that to Thingiverse, and I'll link that in the description below. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, hit the like button, consider subscribing, and you'll see me in part two. Thanks for watching.